Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Wednesday, the 7th of September. Now, lots of people are asking about the new uh, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration uh, approval for emergency use of the new BA4, BA5 variant vaccine. Is it true this is based on data from uh, eight mice? Um, it does indeed appear that is the case. Let's look at this in a little more detail now and hopefully we'll answer these questions with the evidence, of course, because without the evidence, it's not worth the paper it's written on. So that's coming from here. Now, this is the, uh, this is the uh, US Food and Drug Administration update here on these particular uh, variants or, the, or the, the, the vaccine for these particular variants. Now, uh, US, this, this is direct from their site here. U.S. Food and Drug Administration amended the emergency use authorization of the vaccines. And this is the vaccines for the Pfizer and the Moderna. that They've uh, sort of updated the permissions for that at the same time. So it's both vaccines to authorize the bivalent formulations. Now, I think we probably all know that the bivalent formulations means it's got two essentially two types of vaccine in it to induce two types of antigen, one to the original Wuhan variant and the other in this case to the BA4 and the BA5 variant. Now the BA4 and the BA5 variant have got the same spike protein arrangement, so the same uh, vaccine for that particular spike protein should work against both variants. Now it really is a pity that they persist uh, with uh, only producing vaccines for the spike protein. Why don't they produce vaccines that generate an antibody response to the other components of the virus, the, vi the components of the virus which are not associated with causing so much uh, inflammation, for example, the nucleocapsid uh, protein or the envelope protein. But th th anyway, the, the bottom line is they've persisted with the spike protein uh, vaccines. But let, let's go on. Um, so this is it here. Uh, BA4, BA5 lineages of the Omicron variant, sars coronavirus 2 So that's what these new vaccines are for, this bivalent vaccine. Now, Omicron booster shots with lots of questions. Now, this is based uh, largely on an article from the journal Science. And we'll be sort of elaborating on, on what they have said. Now, the background here is the United Kingdom's already uh, authorised the Moderna Omicron uh, subvariant vaccine uh, with uh, BA1. Now, the, U the UK authorisation, it's the original Wuhan one plus BA1, but of course BA1 is now uh, uh, as extinct as the dodo. It's essentially non-existent, as indeed is the original Wuhan uh, variant. So on the face of it, it makes more sense to go for the BA4, BA5. But as we'll see, human trials have been done on the BA1 vaccine, but human trials have not been done on the BA4, 5 vaccine. And that is my main cause of concern, why I particularly wanted to do this video today. So the United Kingdom has authorised that. Um, Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech have submitted data for the BA4, BA5 to the UK, but not yet approved. But the FDA has jumped ahead and has approved it. Now, the Biden administration has already placed orders for 170 million doses of this bivalent vaccine. So absolutely huge amount. So what does it contain? Well, it's messenger RNA coding, coding for the two spike proteins. So we're going to make the body's own cells will produce these two, um, these two spike proteins, the original Wuhan one and the one that codes for the BA4 and the BA5 together. So it's bivalent Wuhan strain, BA1 or BA4, 5. So the UK one, the Moderna one is the BA1. The one that the US has approved tentatively now from the FDA is the BA4, BA5 with the original Wuhan one, but the BA4 and the BA5 go together because they've got the same spike protein. So when we're talking about the one for the United States, it's the BA4, BA5 with the original Wuhan variant. What sort of data have the companies collected? Human data is only available on the BA1 booster. And we did look at this and the numbers weren't that large. So we did question that we remember we did say at the time we would like much larger numbers. 
and we would like much more trial data and a more longitudinal data on many more subjects so we can get the safety data on this as well. But, but alas, we don't have that. And the other thing is that the research that was done for the BA1 um, looked at antibodies, which of course were increased, big deal, antibodies are increased, but it didn't look at the protection against severe disease, hospitalisation and death. It just looked at antibodies. So at the moment, we don't have any information to say that the BA1 new vaccine or the BA4-5 new vaccine are going to protect us more against um, hospitalisations and severe disease and death. It may well, but we don't have the data to prove that, which would be rather nice to have before we go ahead with this programme, I would have thought. Anyway, it's where, it's where we're at. So BA1 trials did not look for protection against severe disease. People trials are expensive, of course. The BA4 or 5 boosters and the companies have submitted animal data. And now this animal data, uh, I, I've looked for this and I can't see it. It doesn't seem to be published. Um, so the animal data is not published. Now, we'd have to ask the question, why is this animal data not published? Because if the animal data was published, we could have international peer review and get serious uh, boffins looking at this, but alas, not published, unless it's been published and I've missed it. Um, Pfizer presented preliminary findings in uh, eight mice given BA4 or 5 vaccines as their third dose. Now, let, 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 let's get this right. Um, Pfizer presented evidence of uh, antibody increases in eight mice. And on the basis of the study in eight mice, they have authorised this vaccine for emergency use authorization for the entire population of the United States over the age of 18. Am I missing something here? That, 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 that's, that's what's happened. Uh, uh, or re that's my reading of all these documents. That This is what, what, what's happened. It, it really is quite incredible. You know, there seems to be some sort of um, vaccine... Uh, juggernaut going on here. Now, I, I will show you my, my constraints in a minute, the YouTube constraints. But w w when I worked on in intensive care, we, we had, we had, um, we had a, a sort of a safety break and it was called Stop the Line. So um, the most junior staff nurse on the team, or indeed a student nurse on the team could say, or a medical student even could say, um, stop the line. And if you said stop the line, everyone should stop what they're doing and there should be a review of what's going on an objective review and the consultant at the end of that review would say, well, okay, if someone said stop the line, I think we should stop the line. Or the consultant at the end of the review could say, okay, someone said stop the line. Having re-examined the data, I decide to carry on the line, which is fair enough. But we just seem to be carrying on this. You know, I think we should say stop the line and, and let's have an objective review on this until we've got more data. But that, that's, not, um, that's not happening at the moment. We just seem to carry on one thing after another, uh, no one seems to be shouting stop the line. But I think it should be fully reviewed. Anyway, clinical trials for BA4-5 vaccine will begin next month. Now, these are the human trials that are going to begin next month. So let's clarify this. The FDA has given authorization and the human trials are going to begin next month. Now, I would have thought that the human trials should come first and then the FDA authorization, but the FDA has decided to authorize while well, the human trials are starting next month. Now, the human trials will be necessary for the full authorization, which is presumably why they're doing that, but the FDA has gone ahead with the emergency use authorization. So that's what we have now. Uh, why are they still containing the ancestral strain? Probably because it's more po polyclonal. So there could be some new variants that come along that the ancestral strain works against. That is, that's possible. So that's not unreasonable to do. And it still has neutralizing powers against the new variants. Not as good as the specific vaccines, but it does have some neutralizing uh, power. So that's reasonable to do. If the benefits are limited, uh, do we really need the new boosters? Some scientists think we don't. So Paul Offit, vaccine researcher, of course, Children's Hospital Philadelphia. Uh, vaccines still prevent the most severe outcomes. If the goal is to stop infections, even updated vaccines will have little impact because the incubation period is too short. So measles and rubella, for example, they have a two week incubation period so they can stop the spread. So the problem is here with measles and rubella, you give the vaccine, you'll make the antibodies. And by the time the person becomes symptomatic, they'll have the antibodies. So the antibodies will, there be, will be there before the person becomes infectious. 
But with the, uh, the new Omicron, the, the incubation period is so short, just uh, a couple of days typically, that people will not have time to make the antibodies. And if they haven't made the antibodies, there's nothing to stop the antibodies from spreading. So the vaccines will have limited effect in preventing the spread, according to Paul uh, Offit anyway. Uh, that is his, uh, that, that's, what he is, uh, that's what he's found. There's a problem with my lighting. There we go, it stopped working. Right, so my lighting's changed, never mind. Um, so Paul Offit again, uh, e e even if 100% of the population were vaccinated and the virus hadn't evolved at all, the vaccine would do very little to stop transmission because it takes so much time to produce the, an the antibodies and the incubation period is shorter. So limited ability to stop transmission. Now, I have to be very careful what I say here because uh, this is from the YouTube site here. So um, this, this is the YouTube um, policy about giving information on um, vaccines, efficacy of vaccines. Content claiming that vaccines, vaccines do not reduce transmission or contraction of the disease is not allowed on YouTube. Therefore, let me make it quite clear, uh, because this is a YouTube video, I am not saying, I am not saying that, that vaccines do not reduce the transmission or contradiction or contraction of disease. Um, uh, Paul Offit seems to think that might be a possibility, but of course I'm not, I'm not saying that because this is a YouTube video. But to be fair to YouTube, um, they also say that claims that uh, any medication or vaccine is guaranteed uh, uh, is a guaranteed prevention method for COVID-19 is also not acceptable. And I agree with YouTube here 100%. So um, YouTube is saying that we can't make claims that any drug, whatever that drug is, any drug, we, we can't claim any drug prevents COVID-19 completely. And of course, that is 100% correct. YouTube is completely correct. And we can't say that any vaccine is completely 100% efficient against preventing disease as well. So YouTube is completely correct there. So what we're saying is that there are degrees of protection. But Paul Offit is saying that the degree of protection against the transmission of disease will be limited. And I'm hoping that's consistent with this YouTube guideline here um, that uh, claims that any medication or vaccine is a guaranteed preventative method against COVID-19 is not allowed. So making it quite clear, I'm not saying the vaccine is giving complete protection against COVID-19 or indeed any other drug. So hopefully that is acceptable. Now, a completely separate topic now. The biopharmaceutical industry provides 75% of the FDA's budget revenue. Is this a problem? Question mark. And this is an article from Forbes magazine or from Forbes news outlet. Um, why on earth a sophisticated country like the United States has a Food and Drug Administration that is so dependent on the biopharmaceutical industry is, of course, a mystery to me because I'm not uh, from the United States. I'm sure if you're from the United States, you'll understand this fully. Caroline Chen, the agency, is beholden to the biopharmaceutical industry. Given the level of support, this level of support, one might assume that the FDA will bend over backwards to meet the needs of its financial backers. Now, of course, we're not saying this at all. Uh, we're just saying this is what Caroline Chen says in this article in Forbes. And that's actually based on this article here from uh, ProPublica. Uh, uh, also, that contains uh, Dr. Thomas Mar, Mar Clinic, uh, former FDA medical team member. Uh, you don't survive as a senior official of the FDA unless you're pro-industry, is the impression um, that uh, Dr. Thomas uh, Marinic has got. Uh, the FDA is to pay attention to what Congress tells them to do, and the industry will lobby them to get someone else if, if they don't like you. So um, that was just the impression, of course, of this one doctor. So whether that's true or not, of course, we've no way of telling. Uh, another completely separate topic, Pfizer has made nearly $26 billion in revenue in the first three months of the year. COVID-19 vaccines and treatments. Uh, expect record sales of $98 billion to $102 billion this year, half of which will come from COVID products, the vaccine and Pax Lovid. Um, promoting fresh accusations of pandemic profiteering, according to an article in The uh, Guardian. Now, of course, we're not saying this, but the, one of the writers of the Guardian article has said that these accusations have been made. People are making a lot of money out of this. 
Of course, no one's saying that there's a revolving door here or anything like that. Um, but it is, the, 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 these are just um, interesting tidbits that we're throwing into this, uh, into this video. Let's leave the last word to AstraZeneca Chief Executive Pascal Sorrett, uh, reported in the Independent newspaper and quite a few other outlets, it has to be said. Um, most of the vaccinated population has a foundation immunity against severe disease. People who are otherwise healthy, especially if they are young, have been vaccinated and have a booster already, boosting them again. I'm just not sure it's a really good use of resources. Um, well, Joe Biden seems to disagree with you, Mr. Soros. Um, he's authorised, what, what did we say, 170-something billion dollars. I can't remember what it was. Some huge amount of money. Uh, I'm just not sure that's a really good use of research. Foundation immunity lasts a long time. We don't know if it's one year, two years or three years. I think it's more than one year for sure. On boosting every year, I'm not sure it's a really good use of money. So we see a clear blue water there between uh, Pascal Sorez, um, in charge of, or one of the people in charge of AstraZeneca, and the, the FDA, and indeed the, the Biden administration. And we're not making a political point here at all. And um, I'm just going to look back and see how much the Biden administration has already ordered uh, here. Was it 100? Did we say 170 something? Some huge amount of money, 170, uh, that's it, it's ordered 170 million doses. Sorry, I stand corrected. It's already ordered 170 million doses. So there we go. Um, we've got data from eight mice. So I would like to see more human data. And um, yeah, I would like to see more human data on that before we go on. Are we just carrying on because we're kind of in a habit now? And of course, there's no mention in this paper about natural immunity, which exists. Uh, and thank you for watching this video.